morning, everyone. Um, I was not at the party yesterday, so I will not make any party jokes. Um, thank you, first of all, to APMF for having us. The, uh, the topic that we have this year is really uh, interesting, and what we decided to do is to actually take a look at what lies beneath um, what we've done at Gojek so far. So previously, we've talked a lot about who our drivers are and what they do, and this is uh, Pa Endang. Pa Endang is a former mechanic, but we're going to get to that story a little bit. So usually you also see these, this type of content. Um, content about our drivers, content about what they've done. But today, we're actually going to talk about something else. So, big question, what's a rewrite? No, it's not one of these. I don't know if anybody still remembers these. Here's something to consider. The Gojek app was launched in January 2015. Who has an iPhone 6 in the room? iPhone 6, right? The iPhone 6 is older than the Gojek application, just to give you an idea and perspective of how long we've been around. So how does a company that's been around for, for just three years reinvent itself or rewrite itself? Let's start with the overall concept, the concept of Gojek. So everybody remembers these guys, the Ojek drivers, right? They're always sitting there smiling, and there's always a question, right? Why should a motorcycle driver be able to do more? Why should a motorcycle driver be able to get my order right? Why should a motorcycle driver be able to keep my items safe? Don't ask why, ask why not. And that's how Gojek was born. All we did is we took these guys, we gave them a phone, and we gave them something to do. 44% increase in driver partner income after joining Gojek. 31% increase of driver spending, meaning that more money is going into the economy. And last but not least, 75% of our drivers are making above national minimum wage. So at Gojek, we believe in the ability of humans to go further at something when you just give them the chance. So rewrite number one is shattering artificial limitations to shift thinking from why to why not. The second, and this is some things that we've actually never really shared before, is the business. So we take a look at the business model. And when you, take a, when you think about startups, startups generally are really highly specialized. The only difference with Gojek is that we decided to be highly diversified from day one. So if you open up the app, you see all these icons. In fact, on day one in 2015, we were already highly diversified. Everybody calls us a ride-sharing platform, but we've been an on-demand platform from January 2015, from when the first order came in. Next is the operations. And this is where things get really interesting. Here's a chart of our monthly orders in, uh, in 2015. So you could see January, not so big, April, May, June, July, wow, July, is starting to get really, really cool. And if you take a look at the chart on the other side, it's the number of registered drivers that we have. And you could see that, okay, okay, June a little bit, July, well, does anybody see a problem here? The number of orders coming in in, uh, in in July did not line up with the number of drivers that were available. So we needed to solve that problem, and we needed to solve that problem fast. And is there a playbook for hiring drivers? No. So what did we do? We decided to uh, write our own playbook. And what, what, what happened after that? We rented out a basketball stadium. This is, this is exactly what it looked like, right? I rented out a basketball stadium, and over the course of six weeks, 120,000 drivers were hired and joined Gojek in Jakarta. So no big deal. Basketball stadium, 120,000 basically a human assembly line of people trying to get, get these drivers through. But think about this. 120,000, that's not just 120,000 people, that's 120,000 jackets, that's 120,000 helmets, that's 120,000 cell phones, that's 120,000 SIM cards, 
all of which needed to be available on those days. In fact, funny story, the factories that we were working with to create jackets actually ran out of the color green. The color green was no longer available in Jakarta and we had to source jackets from other cities. Next is, uh, is our partnerships, right? And these are our partnerships that we've put together for our drivers. So uh, today we're working with a variety of different organizations from, uh, from Allianz to uh, BNI, Permata, in order to put programs together for our drivers. But when they first came to us, we had to really work together with them to change their way of thinking, to rewrite the way they do business. Uh, this is in particular with, uh, with, with insurance and with life insurance. And basically what we had to do is we had to move them from monthly payments into a daily payment mindset. Uh, Allianz had come to us and said, hey, we would like to work together. And we said, well, listen, the monthly payment thing, it's just not going to work. So we've shifted from, uh, from, from monthly payments to daily payments, automatic deductions, and building credibility building financial credibility of being able to pay for things, something that hasn't been happening before. So here's something that holds, uh, holds true to us, and it's the fact that innovation requires you to take best practices, throw them out the door, roll up your sleeves, and just get to work. So rewrite number two is to take the best from your previous experiences and try to build your own playbook. Bonus. Failure is inevitable. It's going to happen. And do it with, uh, do it with grace. I uh, can't tell you how many different times we've managed to screw things up, but the fact is that it happens. We're people. We're all trying to do our best in order to get things done. Next is the app. January 2015, who downloaded Gojek in January 2015? There's 10,000 people who did that. Oh, there's five of you here, six. Fantastic. Thank you very much for, for being with us for three years. We launched as a platform already. Cash only. This was way back in the day. There was 12,000 monthly bookings, right? Cash only. In December 2015, we started to, actually, sorry, one more thing. Notice that there's no go. It's just instant courier, transport, and shopping. By December 2015, we introduced the go into all the products. And now there were 10, including GoFood, including GoLife, including GoTix. And now we started taking uh, Gojek Credit. And if anybody remembers the way Gojek Credit was done, you actually had to transfer money to a bank account. And then you had to wait for three days for somebody to actually look who transferred the money and make that, um, make that calculation and put it into your, uh, into your account. Now, when you, uh, when you top up your GoPay account, it takes all of eight or nine seconds. By in December 2015, we were doing 13 million bookings a month. This was, um, and this was really, really interesting because our application was not built for that. When Gojek launched in January 2015, the, uh, the, the, the targets that we had were, guys, it would be fantastic if you do 40,000 orders a day by the end of the year. We said, all right, great, let's build it, talk to the, uh, the, the developers, we're going to hit 40,000 orders in 52 weeks, it's going to be great. So when we hit 42,000 orders in six weeks, everybody was like, oh shit. And then by December, on that same infrastructure that was built, we were doing 450,000 orders a day. So obviously, uh, it was a little bit of an issue. And if anybody remembers October, November 2015, uh, it was not the best time for Gojek. Thank you for trusting us after, after that, uh, that time period. So next, April 2016, all of a sudden, there was a problem here in, uh, in 2015. There were 10 services, but you can only see six on the screen. So we had to rewrite it again. We launched GoCar, we launched GoPay. Now there were 14 services, including GoPay, and we are doing 18 million bookings a month. Right. The interesting thing here is that we finally had to decide on 
putting everything and making sure that it's available on the main screen. So a couple of months later, in January 2017, we rewrote again. Launched GoPoints, launched a, 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 more, a, a more complete GoPay ecosystem. And now we were doing 30 million monthly bookings. That was January 2017. But that's not enough. So today, this is what the application looks like. And we've changed the homepage user interface entirely. We've changed the GoRide user interface entirely. Still cash and GoPay. Now, a year later, we're doing 100 million monthly bookings. And when you grow at this type of rate, there is no other option than to rewrite because the things that you're building out, get outgrown by the size of the business incredibly quickly. So this is just a couple of the, uh, couple of the new screens. We were actually one of the first, uh, first applications to go from a, uh, from a, from a downwards, down up interface. Um, and you know, what, is a, what does 100 million bookings look like? This is something that, that, we've, uh, that we've shared before, but I wanted to show you what Gojek looks like in Jakarta. And this is, this is Jakarta in a 24 hour time period um, of all the orders that happen through Gojek. But when you talk about rewriting, you have to look under the hood. So the things that you see in the front are, 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 are fine and dandy, but what's really, what's really interesting is just how deep these things go on the back end. So here's an interesting number. 50% of the technology that makes Gojek run today either did not exist or was not considered standard just two years ago. That means that every single developer that works on our business, every single product person that works on our business, needs to relearn a new way of doing things every year. Half a million is the number of orders per engineer that we have at Gojek. And one of the reasons that we, we approach this is because we're using technology to make our things run better, more efficiently, and faster. This is the growth of microservices that we've had. And microservices are the individual tasks that make all of these different things at the company run. So we have close to 300 microservices now, and they're things like available drivers, driver bonuses, driver profiles, user profiles. From an allocation perspective, how did a rewrite on the back end change our business? If you take a look, January 2016, we had a bidding system for bookings. This meant that one booking went to eight drivers, and the one who pressed the button first got it. Kind of became almost gambling. And we realized that was incredibly uh, inefficient and incredibly not scalable. So we decided to change in uh, stage two to send a booking to one driver at one time. And look at that, the growth rate changes. But it's not enough. We could have just sat there and said, great, we're doing fine, but no, we wrote, rewrote the system again. And in stage three, added a couple of other parameters, and all of a sudden, our growth is, uh, is, is becoming even more exponential. So if you take a look at the teams, you take a look at our product team, our engineering team, our data science team, our research team, our marketing, our operation teams, every single one of them is actually changing the way they do their work almost every year. And if you're interested to actually read a little bit more about some of these rewrites <clears throat> in a bit more of a technical language, um, there's, a, uh, there's a little link. Go check it out um, and, uh, and, and see just how, uh, just how interesting it is. So rewrite number three is face it, you have to, because if you don't, they will. Whoever your competition is and whoever your competition that hasn't yet uh, yet started. So anyway, social purpose is at the core of everything that we do. So what have these rewrites done? We've talked about this before. Over 75% of drivers now make more than minimum wage. Since GoPay launched, over 20 million US dollars has been given by you, the customers, directly to drivers as part of the tipping process.
Another way that we're driving the nation, I want to share with you three, uh, three quick facts. Half a percent is the rate by which Gojek and other online businesses lowered their in Indonesian unemployment rate in 2016. So now, now we have more than a million people that are working every single day to make sure that the Gojek ecosystem runs. And, uh, and they've been offered an opportunity to do something, uh, something different. One billion, one billion dollars is the money that was put back into the economy by drivers and merchants. Because now they have money, they have the opportunity to spend money, to buy things. And all of a sudden there's an injection into the community. And last but not least, and this is a, this is a typo, I apologize, number 17, number 17 is the, uh, is, is the space that Gojek, uh, the honor that Gojek received to be on the Fortune Change the World list of companies that are pro uh, providing positive change around the world. And we're the only company from Southeast Asia to make the list. So I wanted to get back to Pa Andang. We talked about all of these rewrites. We talked about the business. We talked about how we're changing things. And we talked about that first thought of just giving people the opportunity to change their life. And why is this so important? Because Pa Andang is not just a regular driver. Pa Andang funds a school. And he is personally responsible for bringing education to 126 kids at the school that he funds. He uses the money that he makes from Gojek to pass it on. And we have millions and millions and millions of situations like this every single day. So just to recap, the three things today. Shift the thinking from why to why not. Now more than ever, technology has given every single one of us the opportunity to participate in all of these different businesses and industries and to create new businesses and industries. Number two is you just got to do the work. There is no playbook, there is no best practice that is going to tell you how to do something like this. There's a lot of failures, there's a lot of stumbling along the way, but when you walk into the forest and you're the first one coming through, if you trip over yourself, then that's okay because no one's there to see it. But if there's a path in the forest and you trip over yourself, well, you didn't learn from the person in front of you. And last but not least, face it. It's what's happening. It's what's happening in the advertising industry. It's what's happening in the marketing industry. It's what's happening in business. If you do not change, people and other companies will change around you, and then you will be left behind. So last but not least, I wanted to share, you know, why, why is this really important to us? Our vision as a company is very simple. It's to use technology and to make Indonesia move faster, move more efficiently, and unleash people's potential. Look what we did with just a couple of guys sitting around with bikes, and we hope to be able to do more of this in the future. So I'm going to say thank you, and I'm going to leave you with uh, one of our favorite, uh, our favorite videos about what Gojek's been able to do in, uh, in Indonesia. Thank you very much. Ayo bangun. Ini hari yang baru buat kita. Mungkin kemarin kita tidur dengan kecemasan dan kegelisahan. Gelisah karena takut lapar lagi. Gelisah karena uang sekolah anak yang semakin mahal. Gelisah karena rutinitas, ancaman PHK, musibah. Ayo bangun. Ini hari yang baru buat Indonesia. Hari ini kita bisa memilih untuk tidak takut lagi. Memilih untuk bebas. Bebas berkarya. Bebas berekspresi tanpa takut lagi. Bebas untuk memilih tantangan baru. Menciptakan kesempatan baru. Bebas untuk terus dan terus belajar. 
bebas untuk bahu membahu bahu membahu untuk Indonesia hari ini akan lahir lagi satu mimpi baru ayo bangun Indonesia Indonesia